Listen, uh, here's a quandary for you. Cork or screw top? And the reason I ask it is the other night we were had a lovely dinner, uh, friends over, uh, all prepared, mm-hmm. and I bought a bottle of wine to go with it. And it, I just don't have any other wine in the, in the house at the moment. So dinner's served. I opened the wine, and it was cork. And it was vinegar. It was just awful. And what um, did you buy? What was it that you paid? It was, a, it was a, a lovely Rioja. A Rioja. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think it was eight pounds fifty. Took it back yeah. to the to the place I got it, and they were very nice about it. Very apologetic. Gave me my refund and all the rest of it. But uh, cork or screw top? You see that that makes you think you, you should have had a screw top. Well, there can be things go wrong with both of those. Ah. So screw top can get knocked. So that could then break the seal, and you can get air into the wine. Sounds like what happened to your cork was that air had got in. The cork had maybe dried out and too much air had got in. The other thing that can happen with cork, of course, is it can make the wine go corked. And what that means is bacteria in the cork gets into the wine and puts like a cardboard type taste into the wine. This was vinegar. It was vile. That was vinegar. So that's a different thing. That's been like way too much air. So the the whole thing had had, uh, failed as a seal. Mm. But it can happen to both of those. But the truth of the matter is it does seem like less problems can happen to screw-capped wines than can happen to corked mm. wines. Uh, yep. uh, are you sniffy about s- screw tops as a man who no, likes no. I, I mean, fine wines? There are countries of the world that produce some of their best wines and seal them under, under screw caps. Australia in particular don't seem to mind too much. They'll put expensive wines and they'll seal it under a screw cap. Britain is a bit sniffy as consumers. We seem to assume that if it's under a screw cap, it must be a cheaper wine. And that if it's a better wine, then it will always be sealed by cork. So it's, it's an uphill bug, uh, a struggle for the, the wine trade to persuade people that just because it's under a screw cap doesn't necessarily mean that it's a cheaper wine. Okay, and, and is cork only cork these days, or it's a bit plasticky in there? It's not, oh, not yeah, you can cork. get all sorts of different sorts of versions of cork, conglomerate cork you can get, and the plastic type you can get. Um, but... The, I think what is what you can definitely say in cork's favour is it's when it's used well, little bits of air coming through the side, just a tiny bit of amount over a long period of time, can take a very expensive Bordeaux and age it slowly over years really well. And it, you'd, you would struggle to find a, a French Bordeaux producer willing to bottle his expensive <laughs> Bordeaux uh, <laughs> under a screw cap. So it's going to take a while to persuade the wine world that there's a benefit in, in screw caps. And, and the greatest cork man of all was Dom Perignon, yeah? Oh, well, uh, well, depends how you understand champagne and who, who actually produced champagne, but it's interesting that, yeah. I mean, champ- uh, champagne cork, of course, is different. You've got a lot of pressure in the wine, but you still, ha- if you've got a good quality champagne, you still need to lay it down, keep the cork in contact with the wine, so that will then stop the cork drying out. That's what happened to your Rioja. It was, it, it was, was dry. Yeah, dry cork. It wasn't on its side. Yeah. Um, so, we're lost to talk about this English wine.